Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a first impression review and wear test of the Physicians Formula Mineral Wear SPF 30 powder. I am so excited to be reviewing this for you guys today because I think my most commonly asked question as it relates to SPF is how do you reapply your SPF over makeup. I think most people know at this point you are supposed to reapply your SPF throughout the day. The FDA actually recommends that you reapply SPF every two hours. That was actually a recent learning for me. I didn't realize it was every two. I was thinking like three to four. So of course, when you're wearing a full face of makeup that's set with powder, maybe powder bronzer, blush, highlight, the thought of putting a liquid SPF on top of that, I mean, the thought alone is disgusting, but if you have ever tried it, I have. It still is disgusting. And I have really acne prone skin, so putting liquid over powder like this and continuing to do that throughout the day is just not an option for me. And then not to mention that starts to make your makeup break up underneath that SPF as you're reapplying. It's just not ideal. So how I reapply SPF when I'm wearing a full face of makeup is by using an SPF setting powder. The SPF setting powder that I have been using for the last couple years is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. Cream. That's an SPF 50 resetting powder that has been discontinued. So I have promised you guys I would start to post videos reviewing these SPF powders because I know a lot of you are interested in that, especially if you are makeup wearers. So we're going to get right into all of that. If you want to see how this applies, you want to hear my thoughts on the ingredients and then just see how it wears throughout the day. This is the perfect video for you. Before we jump into it, if you could please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and click on that notification bell. That would help me out a lot and really mean a lot to me because I upload three to five days a week for you guys. And if you're interested in more content from me, my Instagram and TikTok handle are right here for you. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so let's get into some basics about this powder. So this powder is a talc-free mineral airbrushing pressed powder. It says it's for extra sensitive or breakout prone skin, which I immediately am like, we're gonna find out. I really wanna dig into ingredient labels when I see claims like that because I have sensitive skin, I have acne prone skin. And if the ingredient label doesn't hold up to those claims as a consumer, I'm a little upset or a lot upset. So we're gonna get into that, of course. This is 0.26 ounces and retails for $14.99. The version that I have here is their translucent version. Looking on at least Ulta's site, they also have a shade called Creamy Natural. So I'm not sure. Let me actually look really quickly on their website and see if they have other shades. I am not seeing any other shades on their site at all. I actually only see one. Okay, so it looks like those are the two shades that exist right now. Creamy Natural looks very similar to the translucent shade, just a little bit darker. I mean, the photos look almost identical. And then as far as the amount of powder that you get in here, I wanted to see if that was comparable to this It Cosmetics powder that I have. This one is 0.33 ounces and this one's 0.26 so pretty comparable obviously this used to be a lot pricier than this which is $14.99 so I think that that is pretty fair all right now I want to talk through some of the details of this powder and what they have listed as benefits on their site so they say it's a smoothing firming and lifting powder interesting it's dermatologist approved it has a 16 hour airbrush finish. It's non comedogenic. It's hypoallergenic, fragrance free, paraben free, comes with a kabuki brush, is for extra sensitive and breakout prone skin, and has a minimalist formula to help to reduce irritations and breakouts. And I want to quickly address a lot of those claims and that a lot of them are essentially meaningless and don't have one standard definition that's regulated by the FDA. So brands can put claims like that on their products, but they can mean totally different things. So dermatologist approved does not mean that there was a clinical trial that was upheld where this product was tested on people and then they drew results from that. That's not what that means. And just because something says it's dermatologist approved does not necessarily mean that your dermatologist would actually recommend that product for you or your skin type. Same thing with non-comedogenic and hypoallergenic. Those are not FDA regulated claims. And the reason that they are on products is to make you think that they won't clog pores, they won't cause acne, and they won't cause irritation or sensitivity, but that is not necessarily always the case. 
fragrance free we have talked about a lot i have a video that i posted recently on this channel explaining why fragrance and essential oils are no good for the skin card for that here and linked below if you're interested but the term fragrance free is also not always true so this powder could be free of synthetic added fragrance but for all we know it could have essential oils and still have that label on there even though essential oils are fragrance so of course i looked into all of this for you guys and looked up every single ingredient to actually see what's going on here and thankfully i was very impressed by the ingredient label yay i get so excited whenever i'm actually able to say that so there are no ingredients on this label that are known to be skin sensitizers a sensitizer is something that is proven to have caused people to develop allergies after repeated exposure and there are also no ingredients in here that are supposed to be irritating to the skin Yes, yes, yes. So the fact that this powder is claiming to be for sensitive skin types and acne prone skin types is actually a valid claim here because I did not find anything concerning on the ingredient label. So this actually has a couple ingredients that I was really excited to see. One of those is squalane. Squalane is an antioxidant emollient that helps to hydrate the skin. So I love seeing a moisturizing ingredient like that in a powder because if you're going to be reapplying this powder throughout the day, you of course do not want it to be something that's drying on the skin, especially if you already have dry flaky skin. This also has tocopherol acetate in it, which is a form of vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant that is also amazing for the skin. So I was super excited to see that as well. And then I forgot to say the active ingredients in here are titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. There's 4.2% zinc oxide and 6% titanium dioxide. So this SPF is formulated with 100% mineral active ingredients, which I love to see for a couple reasons. The first is that chemical active ingredients or chemical filters in a sunscreen are known to be potential irritants and to potentially cause breakouts for people that are acne prone. So again, that just helps to stand up to the claim that this is for sensitive skin and acne prone skin because you definitely want to avoid SPFs that only have chemical active ingredients in them if you have one of those skin types. Also, you're getting better protection when you're using an SPF that has mineral active ingredients because those active ingredients actually help to protect our skin against longer UVA rays more than chemical active ingredients do. So better protection, better for the skin if you're sensitive or acne prone, that is amazing. And I love that this has zinc oxide in it and not just titanium dioxide because zinc oxide has been proven to be more effective than titanium dioxide when it comes to protecting our skin. And then lastly, I wanted to call out that I'm really happy that this is a broad spectrum SPF 30. A lot of the times I feel like SPF powders are only an SPF 15, which is not going to give you as much protection as an SPF 30 or higher. So you wanna make sure you're always using at least an SPF 30, if not higher. So that's great. And right off the bat, I can say I'm very impressed by the ingredients within this powder. So that is super exciting. However, of course we want to see how this applies applies to the skin, how it feels on my skin, and how it wears throughout the day. So let's jump into application. Of course, I already have two applications of SPF on underneath my foundation. The first is the Color Science Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. This is a mineral broad spectrum SPF 50. Amazing. I've raved about this so many times, so I will spare you guys a repeat there, but I will link below a video that I have where I talk about this in depth if you are curious. And then I also have on the Cetaphil Red redness relieving daily facial moisturizer. This is a broad spectrum SPF 20 for redness prone skin and it also only has mineral active ingredients. So I love both of those SPFs. I wanted to make sure that I had SPF underneath my foundation that I know I can rely on and that I know I love so that that did not sway my opinion of this powder. And then the foundation I'm wearing, let me find, is the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. Again, another foundation that I know I can always trust and love so that won't sway my opinion of this powder either. Because I had just applied these sunscreens underneath that foundation, I didn't need more protection from this SPF powder right away. So that's why you can see in this clip, I am using this larger powder brush. This is a Sigma 
F30 brush because I just wanted to see how it applied first as a setting powder and how it looked on my skin that way. As I go on throughout the day, I definitely will be using a more densely packed brush and will not be using this anymore because the protection that you get from this kind of brush compared to a more densely packed brush is not the same. And for reapplication purposes, I really want to make sure that I am fully covering every inch of my face and not missing anything. But upon first application, I can honestly say I really, really enjoyed this formulation. I think it looks nice on the skin. It doesn't look overly drying or cakey. I didn't feel that it made it look like I was wearing more makeup. That's another issue that I can sometimes have with SPF powders. It just adds coverage in a way that I don't want it to. Do you know what I mean? Or at least makes things look darker. So I did feel that this lightened up the color of my foundation a tiny bit, but it was not anything major. I feel like it's hardly noticeable. Maybe I'll feel differently when I look back at the clip, but once I put on bronzer and blush and finish the rest of my face, I feel like everything balanced out perfectly and my bronzer and blush applied on top of this powder smoothly and I think everything just ended up looking really, really nice. So first impression of this powder is a very, very good one. I'm super excited to continue to wear this throughout the day. I have high hopes. So we will be checking back in when I am ready for reapplication and we'll use a different brush for that and then we'll see how we are looking. But let me give you guys a quick close up before we go so that you can see where we are right now. I just feel like it looks good. I'm a little bit shiny in through here, which is very normal for me. That pretty much happens no matter what. So we'll see how this controls my oils throughout the day. I have combination skin that leans oily. Hopefully I don't have any huge issues with that, but so far so good. We'll be back in a second. All right, reapplication time. It's been a couple hours since I first applied this. Let's see how we are looking. So overall, I think this looks pretty good. I definitely am getting a little bit oily through my cheeks, on the bridge of my nose, and on my forehead. That's where I always start to produce oils, and compared to other powders, I do not look more oily than I normally do. So I would say this is very comparable to the other powders I use and is holding up well. I do just look a little bit cakey around my mouth area, and that's just because I'm having a lot of irritation right now, and the skin in that area the skin, my skin in that area of my face is just a little bit scaly and dry and itchy right now. So that's why it's definitely not because of the powder. So I'm kind of just trying to look at the rest of my face and the rest of my face I think looks really good. So, ugh. Okay, let's reapply again. I am using a denser brush to make sure that I am fully covering every inch of my face. This is the Urban Decay Optical Blurring Foundation Brush. I'm just gonna pack this in here and here we go. So this lightened up my face a lot. I look like I have a very apparent white cast right now and it really kind of removed that color that I had from my bronzer and blush. I'm seeing it still a little bit in here, but not completely. <sighs> I'm gonna give that a couple minutes to settle in and we will see if it stays looking like this. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, so it's definitely a little bit better, but not completely. I feel like it's really clinging to the areas that I'm irritated and dry right now. Oh man. So I'm gonna see if I can put like a little bit more bronzer and blush on top of this and how that balances out. <sighs> but this is sad. I can't tell, I feel like in the viewfinder it doesn't look as bad as it does in person. I shouldn't say bad, as white as it does in person. But maybe when I look back at that footage, I'll be like, no, it does look just as bad. Uh, so this is a bummer. This is obviously not going to be something that works if you have really dark skin or even skin tones that are more medium to deep. This isn't going to be something that works for you because I can clearly see this sitting on my face. I definitely am curious to see how this will work on my skin when I'm not having any irritation or dry spots, but I think it's a good indication for those of you that are dry and flaky 
Ah, oh, it's like the white just wants to cling to those areas, but I do feel like the addition of bronzer and blush on top of it helped to balance it out a little bit. I'm trying to see in the viewfinder. Yeah, like from here it doesn't look bad, but when I get up close in the mirror, I'm like, <gasps> ugh. You guys, I wanted to love this so bad. We're gonna keep going on throughout the day. Also, I just was thinking about it. If I'm wearing a full face of makeup like this, it's either to film or to go out and get drinks or dinner at night when the sun has already set. Do you know what I mean? So at that point, I don't need to be reapplying SPF on top of what I already have on. So that makes me feel a little bit better. I just was trying to think about it and I don't wear makeup like this just during the daytime or to work ever. So that's at least the good news there, but I'm sure that there are some of you who do and want to see how this works. So a uh, mixed review and feelings right now. We'll be back. All right, time for the next reapplication. I feel like right now I don't look like I have as much of a white cast as I did before. I'm still just having textural issues in here, so I apologize for that. Let's ignore if we can, because I feel like it's not at all a fair representation of the powder. So I'm trying to like pay attention to my cheeks and my forehead where I feel like this powder looks really, really nice. Let's reapply. Same situation as before. Hi, white cast. Welcome back. Such a bummer. I was really hoping that this would not have a white cast at all. Even though it says translucent, this does, I mean, you can see there's a little bit of color to here. It's not like this is a white powder. So I was hoping that would help, but I wonder if the other shade that they have in this would make it so that you're not getting that white cast. But then the issue potentially is that it's adding additional color or altering the color of your foundation, which of course we don't want either. So I may have to look into that one after this. Right now, what I wanna try to do is to set this with my Morphe setting spray. This is a spray I love to use if I feel like my powder is looking too powdery, too dry, too heavy, anything like that. So I'm gonna try that and see if that kind of helps with how this is looking, we'll see. We'll give it a sec and as this is drying, I was just thinking, I want to start to do all day wear tests of SPFs and just showing you guys how they wear throughout the day. For those videos, do you want me to show them with a full face of makeup and then reapplying with a powder? Or do you want me to show you how that wears throughout the day when you're not wearing makeup and you're reapplying just that SPF throughout the entire day? Do you know what I mean? I feel like those are two totally different videos, so you guys are going to have to let me know what you would rather see. I'm not sure which makes the most sense for a video, so keep me posted. Mm. Yeah, I don't really feel like that spray did anything. Definitely, I'm just feeling a little bit crepey, if you will, right now, and then we have that white cast again. It's definitely not as bad as a white cast that I get from some liquid SPF, so like the CeraVe SPF that is untinted, that gives me such a pronounced white cast. It's way worse than this, so we're not quite at that level, but of course, it's definitely lightened up. So we'll be back later. We clearly have a new backdrop. I'm actually at Eli's parents' house. We're gonna spend the night here tonight. So I thought I would do my final reapplication and just wrap up the video here and give you guys my final thoughts. So let's do that reapplication. I'm using my phone as a mirror. Okay, this lighting really shows off the white cast and I feel like the white cast is just getting worse and worse the more I reapply, unfortunately. So overall thoughts on this Physicians Formula SPF powder, I definitely have mixed 
feelings about it because I love the fact that this has a really great ingredient list. There's nothing on this list that's concerning or that's known to be a sensitizer or skin irritant. I also love that it's an SPF 30 and that it's a mineral SPF. So all of those things are great. And I found that with the first application, I did really enjoy the formula. Unfortunately, we just have seen as the day has gone on and as I have reapplied this powder, the white cast has just become more and more apparent. So definitely not going to be an option for those of you that have deep to dark skin tones, unfortunately. I'm really curious to try out that natural beige color to see if that helps with the white cast. So let me know if you guys want to hear my updated thoughts on that. I can definitely keep you posted. So I'm not going to say that this powder is an absolute no because of the white cast. Obviously there are a lot of SPFs out there that have a white cast that are effective SPFs and that I still enjoy. But the difference is that when I'm using a liquid SPF with such an intense white cast, it's usually underneath makeup. Also, as far as how it feels on the skin, again, I'm trying to ignore this section because it does just feel really dry there. But on my forehead and the rest of my cheeks, I don't feel like this powder is feeling extra heavy at all. It doesn't feel so super cakey or anything like that. So that's good at least. This definitely is not a drying powder. So I enjoy that. I think the formulation for an SPF powder and for the amount of times that I have reapplied is really nice. It's just this white cast that's not going to work. Also, I only reapplied, what, three times because I got a really late start to my day. Sorry, I had to adjust a little bit. The sun is shining like right onto my face. What I was trying to say is if I had to reapply this SPF two to three more times, I feel like the white cast would be just a horrible situation. So those are my overall thoughts and final review on this Physician's Formula Powder. You guys will definitely have to let me know in the comments below. Have you tried this out? Did you have the same experience as me? Have you tried that natural beige color and had a better experience? Are you interested in this after watching this video? Definitely let me know. We can chat in the comments below. Stay tuned for more SPF powder all day wear tests and reviews. And if there's anything else you would like to see from me next on this channel, leave that in the comments below. I would love to do that for you. Otherwise, my next video will be up in a few days. So until then, I hope you have a great few days.